Hey everyone! In this video, I'm going to be harvesting and cooking honey fungus. Scientific name, Armillaria malaya. I'll also offer some tips on how to properly identify this mushroom. But before I go any further, I must say it is extremely important to have good verification skills before consuming any wild mushrooms. Anything you choose to ingest is done at your own risk. It is imperative to research and re-research any type of mushroom before you attempt to go out and forage for the dinner table. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. In this shot is a classic fruiting of the honey mushroom. You can see here they tend to grow in dense clusters, but it's not uncommon to see them growing sporadically or even singularly. However, if you see just one fruiting body somewhere, look around. You'll probably find more in the immediate area. These are often very prolific fruiters and are fairly common and widespread. The growing season for honey mushrooms is normally late summer through fall in temperate zones, but they can be found year-round in warmer climates. In this shot, they appear to be growing up from the ground, and while that may conflict with some of the literature you've read, I guarantee they are growing directly on buried wood. Honey mushrooms always grow associated with some type of tree. It, the tree, could be living, dying, or dead. You may find them growing directly on a tree or stump, at the base of the aforementioned examples, or on the buried roots that span outward from the main trunk. The cap of this species of honey mushroom is yellowish to varying shades of brown. They can get fairly large, reaching sizes between 2 to 5 inches in diameter, and usually have some fine scales or hairs which are darker in color than the rest of the cap. It should be noted that these scales can wear off with rain, handling, or cleaning, and the underside will always contain gills, which are white in color when young, but they can become yellow to brownish with age. The gills will always be attached to where the stem meets the cap, and may sometimes even taper down the first centimeter or so of the stalk. It contains no bulb at the end, and will have a cottony white ring near the top. But the ring can become less pronounced with age and handling. The spore print of the honey mushroom is pure white. Okay, let's talk about harvesting wild mushrooms. You can pluck the whole thing off the substrate it's growing from, cut it at the base, break it off, or just harvest the parts you wish to consume. Don't worry about hurting the mushroom colony itself if you don't cut it from the base. These are the fruiting bodies, and their sole purpose is reproduction. I usually do cut mushrooms when I harvest them, but that's just because it makes the cleaning process at home easier. Cutting them helps keep them clean during transport by not including a bunch of dirt or organic matter that would normally be stuck to the base of the mushroom. As far as what to use for transporting them from the field to your home, I almost always utilize disposable paper lunch bags. But reusable mesh bags or baskets are nice, so long as you aren't mixing edible and toxic species together. Plastic bags are fine for short-term transportation if that's all you have available, but if you plan to store any of your prizes in the refrigerator, it's best to put them in a paper bag or something similar. Plastic bags do not allow airflow and trap moisture against the mushrooms themselves. That will in turn speed up deterioration. Let's check out some photos. Here's a close-up of the gills and stock. You can see the gills are a nice light color and there is a white cottony ring on the top part of the stock. This is the group of mushrooms you just watched me harvest from the base of a stump. I took this picture a few days prior to shooting the rest of this footage for comparison. You can see the caps are convex in this shot, and the scales are obvious. And in this picture, same group as the previous photo but taken the same day as the video, and after a heavy rain, shows how the caps flattened out with age and lost some of the scales on top. Another picture of the underside for identification purposes. A close-up of a younger example for reference. And a picture of an even younger example for variety. The partial veil is nice and apparent here, 
and is the cause of the ring you see on the stock of older specimens. I included this photo to show how the ring tends to rub off with handling, but you can see it's still partially present. This is an important part of identifying wild mushrooms. Spore prints. To carry out a spore print, simply cut the stem off the cap, place the cap gill side down on a piece of paper, and wait about a day. I like to place any mushroom I'm taking a spore print of over white and black paper for better color verification. If the cap is kind of dry, sprinkle a few drops of water on the top to simulate a light drizzle. You can see these mushrooms put off heavy deposits of white spores exactly what you would expect from a honey mushroom spore print. The following pictures are nice examples I found on Wikimedia Commons to showcase how varied this species can be in appearance. Not to mention, they're absolutely fascinating mushrooms to look at. There are some poisonous look-alikes for honey mushrooms, which include, but are not limited to, the deadly Gallerina, Gallerina marginata, which have a pure brown, smooth cap with brown gills, brown spores, and a rusty brown ring around the stipe. These are usually smaller mushrooms and don't really grow in dense clusters, so if you know what to look for, it's easy to avoid this one. The Sulfur Tuft, or Hypholoma fasciculare, I hope I pronounced that right. I'm not sure if I've ever come across these in person, but I've read about them in many field guides and mushroom forums, so I figured I had better mention them. These are a drab yellow mushroom with a yellow stalk containing a brown ring, yellow gills that become green with age, and a purple-brown spore print. The jack-o'-lantern mushroom, Omphalatus eludens and Omphalatus oleorius, once again, not sure if I pronounced that right, and I'm also not sure if this one is usually considered a look-alike, but I think it's a good thing to be familiar with these mushrooms as well. Jack-o'-lanterns have a bright orange cap, bare orange stalk, yellow to orange gills, and put off yellow spores. They aren't incredibly similar in appearance, but they do grow in tight clusters on rotting wood like honey mushrooms do and I could see somebody confusing younger specimens of jack-o'-lanterns for honey mushrooms on first glance. I have found these in very early fall before in Pennsylvania, so the seasons can overlap. Remember, it's just as important to be familiar with toxic mushrooms as it is to be familiar with edible ones, especially the poisonous look-alikes of any species you intend on consuming. Alrighty, time for some prep. If your mushrooms aren't particularly dirty, you can usually just wipe off any dirt or grass, etc. with a damp paper towel like I'm doing here. This is why I typically cut wild mushrooms when I harvest them. It makes cleaning so much easier when they aren't jostled in the bag or basket with a lot of excess dirt or vegetation. If your mushrooms are dirty though, it's perfectly fine to rinse them under cold running water. They will absorb a tiny bit more water from this rinse method, but that's a non-issue. Some of the caps of these honey mushrooms have a slight wrinkling around the outer edges. This is only cosmetic, and it just means they're a little older. We also had a frost the night before I harvested them, and that may be a contributing factor.
You've probably noticed I'm cutting most of the stalks off and discarding them. They're not toxic or anything, it's just a texture issue. The stalks of older specimens can be pretty tough and woody, but the younger examples have fleshy stalks similar to those of store-bought button mushrooms. Cutting the stalk is also a good way to inspect things for any insect infestation. Alright, now I'm going to start cooking. I'm not a chef, so I won't go into depth about how I prepared these. I mainly want this video to be a tool for expanding your mycology knowledge. But I can give you some basic tips. I really like just about any mushroom simply sautéed up in butter with salt and pepper. But as long as you cook these well, you can prepare them any way you wish. If you are afraid of getting an upset stomach, parboil them in water for about one minute prior to cooking. Even though honey mushrooms usually fruit in enormous quantities, err on the side of caution and resist the temptation to consume a large amount in any one setting. This is especially true for the first time you try them. I do admit this is my first year eating honey mushrooms. Now, I've found and identified them many times before in the past, but I never had the urge to try them until now, and I must say I'm glad I did. They have a very nice chewy texture and an intense mushroom flavor. Remember though, taste should not be the only identifying factor you use for any fungi. Don't assume all toxic mushrooms taste bad. Some non-toxic mushrooms taste downright awful, and some deadly mushrooms reportedly taste fantastic. The only way to know which mushrooms are safe is through careful field guide study and even more careful hands-on experience. Always seek out expert advice when possible. It is never a bad thing to be overly cautious when hunting wild mushrooms. Don't rely on just taking a picture and sending it to someone for identification. Some cameras can alter the real-life color of a mushroom and result in an unreliable identification from the person who received it. Be sure to cook any wild mushroom well. I had these on medium-high heat for over 15 minutes and not only did they taste great, they gave me no adverse effects. But once again, your experience may be different. I think that's about all for now. I hope this video was able to help you out in some way. Let me know what you think in the comments, and most of all, thank you for watching.